Well, for more analysis on the outlook for the trade tensions between China and the U.S., we're joined by international business executive Ryan Patel. Welcome back to the show, Ryan. Thanks for having me. Now, we know there, were plenty of market, there was plenty of market optimism ahead of and after President Xi and Trump meeting to discuss trade. Talk about the progress made from that meeting. Well, think about what would have happened if they didn't come to an agreement. I think that's what I look at first, because that would have turned the markets down to uh, the opposite what you saw today. I think what you see progress was that they both actually sat down and realized both countries, that this is not hurting the markets and confidence, especially investors on both sides from China and the U.S., and that they needed to take, I guess, a time out and, and to de-escalate de the situations. And that's what they did. They bought themselves 90 days or a little bit longer than that to be able to create create some comfortability or more important predictability for investors to say, hey, we're, both countries are trying to figure this out. So then what should we be watching for in the course of this 90-day truce period? Well, Twitter, I guess. No, I mean, I, I think I want to see progress of steps. I think what you don't want to see, and hopefully won't be the case, is in the next 30 days, what things come out in details in this deal. How are they moving the short term, as the administration said in the U.S., that they're going to try to go after the short term um, objectives and try to reach those uh, little, little pieces to it. And I think the longer term plays, which the U.S. has talked about when it comes to you know, IP rights and those things, will be still there, but I don't see them being touched until later. Now, of course, we know that the U.S.-China dialogue really over tended to overshadow a lot of what happened at the G20. But what about some of the other trade issues? For example, the U.S.-Mexico-Canada agreement, a.k.a. the revamped NAFTA deal. How was that received? Yeah, I think it it, it was a, obviously a signing moment for all three of the countries. Obviously, they're very happy. Without this China-U.S. Uh, dinner, I think that would have been the big, the big news that came out of G20. But you know, for me, what stood out was if, you, if every single country head came out and talked about how important global trade and cooperation was. I think that cannot be. Um, dismissed because I think everybody was pointing toward the U.S. and China and to the other countries. And the NAFTA piece um, was important behi behind this. And I think a lot of even the prime minister of Australia came out and felt that that was uh, one of the accomplishment was the U.S. China being able to come to table and to kind of tie into the theme of globalization. And to that point, no, we know that there was a, a lot of other ground to cover at the G20. You had WTO reform, infrastructure, climate change, among other matters. So talk about the progress on some of these non-trade issues. Yeah, I think that the WTO was, was, was interesting because I think all the countries came saying that there needed to be reforms. And that's, that's a pretty big stance that uh, you talk about the, these top 20 countries to, to come through. And obviously the, the climate change was pretty, uh, pretty predictable with one country Obviously, the U.S. not signing it um, or wanting to declare behind the, the memorandum versus the other countries. So that didn't, re didn't really surprise me as much. But definitely the WTO was one thing of the reforms that everybody wanted to push through. And how significant are those WTO reforms in terms of how they might perhaps handle the current global trade tensions? Well, I think that's where the um, majority of, of, of they want some kind of change. The really question of the WTO is, what kind of teeth do you have? What kind of teeth can they have to be able to be the judge or to be able to hold everyone accountable? I think that is where, yes, one, that yes, everybody wants change. Two is that, what is the accountability behind it? And then we're going to see what that looks like. And we also saw, as you mentioned, no joint statement when it came to climate change. So where does that put things as we head into the COP24? Well, I think to exactly where we were a few months ago, I think it's one of those um, issues that the U.S. Um, continues to be divisive on when it comes to administration and maybe potentially from other companies that where they stand, take a stance on here on climate change. So uh, I think in the U.S., they've, they've been um, kind of both parties have been uh, equally on other sides of the party. So the U.S. hasn't came together as a whole on what they want to do, what they should be doing. And as we look at the main outcomes and the, and the overall view of the G20, a lot of people are wondering, is this trade war going to sort of realign different trade alliances? Given what we've seen now with the progress in this dinner, what are your thoughts? I, you know, we're not out of the, we're not out of the woods yet. I mean, you look at mar the markets today. Yeah, they were up by 1%, but it wasn't like 5%, 6%. I mean, three weeks from now, who knows that somebody comes out and says, well, trade talks are off and they're going to increase the tariffs again. I mean, in a few, in, in three months, you know, we're right back to where we were. I, to me, I think it, they re this is not a time for either the U.S. or China to take a step backwards. This is 
you know, if both sides agree to what they're going to do, they have to do it. I think that will cause this market and obviously the, the, the relationship to continue to move forward and, and be strong because they both need each other. Indeed. Well, don't go anywhere. International business executive Ryan Patel will be back with us to explore China's ties with Latin America later in the show.